continue the AFC North. Today, the Cleveland Browns win total four and a half, under minus 130. Last year, one and 15 straight up, three 12 and one ATS, eight and eight over under. Mainstream stats, 13 takeaways, only the Bears had fewer, 25 giveaways, minus 12 turnover margin. There's, I mean, there's not a lot, there's nothing to like here, Teddy. The offense, everything was terrible. They're lucky they won a game. Yeah, no question. But it's it's the NFL. Teams find a way to win a game, or two, or three, or four, despite being awful in many different categories. For Cleveland last year, being awful. I mean, uh, they were awful in everything. But there was some stuff to like offensively. Interestingly enough, okay, the 5.1 yards per play, that's well below we league average. The 6.5 yards per pass, that's the bottom quartile. The 66 sacks allowed, the worst in the NFL by far. Uh, the second worst team, L.A., had 49 sacks allowed, which just shows how bad Cleveland was. But the one thing that stood out, one thing they did okay last year, 4.9 yards per rush. That was number two in the NFL. Only Buffalo was better. They were ahead of the Dallas Cowboys in yards per rush. Their bigger problem, in my mind, last year was the defense that, as you mentioned, only forced the 13 takeaway. 101.8 quarterback rating allowed, second worst in the NFL behind the Lions, 26 sacks, 30th. Only the Lions and Raiders had fewer, and 4.6 yards per rush allowed, fourth worst. I think they had a good draft. Garrett, number one. Peppers also in the first round. And Joku, the tight end out of Miami, first round. Kaiser, the quarterback out of Notre Dame in the second round. I don't know what they're going to do with quarterback, but maybe, just maybe, Osweiler can have a decent season. There's no pressure on the guy now. He flamed out in Houston. I mean, no one expects him to do anything with the Browns. I'm with you 100%. Look. Look at the picture. I mean, Hugh Jackson last year, he was down on his knees begging for a quarterback over and over. You remember the injuries they had at quarterback. You remember the disaster the offensive line was. And, of course, the lack of skill position talent was disastrous. This year, I'm telling you, their quarterback situation is better. Okay, maybe Deshaun Kaiser is the QB of the future. Maybe he isn't. You know, he brings them marginally closer to an answer at least. But I'm with you on Osweiler having nothing but upside. With Cleveland, number one, Hugh Jackson's a bright offensive mind. Number two, the markets aren't expecting anything out of Brock Osweiler. So if he's decent, all of a sudden, there's a whole lot of value uh, on Cleveland. Now, uh, uh, to say that this team is going to turn the corner at the QB position or find the answer for the future or uh, be better than average at QB, I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is that the Browns are likely to have a better QB situation this year than last and could get decent QB play, and that might go a long way towards bringing them back to respectability. They upgraded the offensive line. They did a good job there. And Greg Williams, the new defensive coordinator, well, I mean, what is it, 3-4, 4-3, three, 3-4, four, four, three, three, four. what are they doing now on defense? Yeah, they're, well, they're switching back to a 3-4 as they've done, but i got to talk about the offensive line because an, an upgrade is not a strong enough statement. This offensive line was a freaking disaster last year. So they signed Kevin Zietler. They signed him away from their rival in Cincinnati. He's one of the best guards in football. You know, uh, they got the uh, future Hall of Famer, a left tackle, and Joe Thomas. They locked up the one good interior lineman they have, uh, Joel Petonio, uh, to an extension. And they signed J.C. Treader from Green Bay. This has the makings of a decent to above average offensive line. I think there's real hope in that regard for the Cleveland Browns. When it comes to the other end of the equation <laughs> on the defensive side, I'm not a big fan of Greg Williams, and I haven't been, but they have a lot of building blocks. You know, you look at Jamie Collins and Danny Shelton and Joe Hayden, all guys who should be fitting into the latest defensive change. And as you mentioned, they've been switching from 3-4 to 4-3 and back again. In my mind, that's a bigger issue in the media than it is on the field. They're playing hybrid styles right now, and I expect to see a lot of that. Uh, but, of course, Williams as a defense coordinator has been largely discredited over the course of his failed defenses in many different stops in recent years. I don't know how well he's going to fit in Cleveland this season. What do you have on the schedule? And the NFL said, beat it. Get out of here. They don't have one national TV game. No, they sure didn't. I mean, last year's schedule was brutal. It was top five in the NFL for toughness. This year, it's still the toughest schedule in the division, obviously, because they don't get to play themselves. But it's notably easier than it was last year. They do lose a home game to play the Vikings in London. That's never a good thing. Now, if you remember, <laughs> uh, this is not a team 
Uh, uh, and as you mentioned, they, they don't play anything. Uh, in terms of night, what do they have? I think they have one 4 o'clock game in L.A. They don't even get any late afternoon games. It's all 1 o'clock starts uh, for the Browns, with the exception of that one game in London, which is a uh, going to be an early, <laughs> what, 9.30 a.m. kickoff in Cleveland. Well, I talked to a lot of uh, professional bettors who kind of like this over, but I, I can't get there. You're talking about a big jump from one win to five. What do you think? I think they're very live. I could only bet Cleveland over. And if you remember, the very first win total, when the lines first came out, we talked about it on the show, and we used it as a play of the day, and my line was, this line's not, this, this number's not going to be there tomorrow. That was Cleveland over four, and I knew that number wouldn't last, and it didn't. I would still bet them over four and a half right now before I bet them under four and a half. But, of course, we can't use that as a play of the day now because we already used over four for a play of the day, which was a much better bet, which leaves us with something else. Hey, guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.